Now, I'm going to put out a challenge to Chambra here, uh, and uh, we'll have this challenge go, let's say, through the end of the year, and then we'll, we'll come back and monitor it. But the challenge is pretty simple. You spent your whole life and lifetimes battling things. All of you had a, a physical or metaphorical sword that you carried with you. You spent your whole life in battle, in many different ways, literally in battle. Um, a lot of you battled for uh, religious um, forces. A lot of you battled in armies for, for countries. But most of the battling was done on an everyday basis, trying to get things for your life, working too hard to try to accomplish something. You're a great sword carrier. Uh, put it down. Put it down. You, 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 you use your force and your energy. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make it happen. Fuck that. Seriously. Drop it. You're so used to working hard, battling hard, fighting for things, and then when you, get, when you have some sort of accomplishment, you get something, you're so proud. I'm a tough warrior. I'm a battler. I can make it happen. I can power my way through all these energies. I'll fight my way into it. Then you get some, you win a few little battles, I mean little battles, and you think you're some grand warrior with energy. No. No, not anymore. Of course, this isn't just you. This is the way the world operates. This is what people do. I got to work for it, battle for it, fight for it, overcome things, and then you get real proud of yourself. Look what I overcame in my life. Look at my personal issues, my emotional issues, my business issues, and I've done all this stuff and battled for it. That ends. That all ends. Now, that's going to be a tough one because that's the way you're used to doing things. That's the way the planet is used to doing things. The challenge is stop the battle, stop the fights, stop all the hard work, stop thinking that uh, everything has to be so hard and rigorous, and now receive. I've talked about it in a hundred different ways. Energy serves the Master. Uh, let energy serve you. I'm going to put it this way. L now receive. It's all right there. It's in the light that comes in with the Apocalypse. It's there for your body. You do not fight your body anymore. And so many of you are still doing that. You have an owie somewhere and you fight it. it mentally, you're like, I'm going to overcome that. I'm strong. I'm going to positive thinking. And you're just battling. That's all. I have abundance issues. Oh, I have, I have to go to work hard and I've got to, what am I doing wrong? Well, I see other people and they work really hard and they're abundant. Maybe I'm not working hard enough. Maybe I'm not smart enough. That is a battle. I'm not smart enough. That's a battle. I don't know the tricks. That's a battle. It's one simple thing to receive. Now, that is perhaps the biggest change that comes as a result of the apocalypse. You've been pretty graceful, mostly up to now, on, on this. Uh, disruptions at major levels. But I see in Shambhar that you're still battling. I'm going to take this light and I'm going to whip the, the crap out of all my problems and I'm going to overcome my physical ailments. No. Now the tough part is that is ingrained in you and in humans. That somehow you have to work through energies. Uh, somehow you have to exert yourself. You gotta, you gotta be either smart or hardworking or good looking. One of the, one of the three, and to overcome the things, life becomes a constant series of these uh, uh, hurdles that you're trying to overcome, and you get kind of good sometimes, once in a while, overcoming hurdles, and then you think, oh, see, I did it. I'm, a, I'm a master because I can overcome hurdles. If you are a master, there would be no hurdles in the first place, none. That's the challenge to each and every one of you. You become a receiver of your own light. No more forcing, no more, no more battling. Now, I'm having a little argument with Caldry here. He's so funny. Uh, <laughs> he's saying, does that mean I just have to sit on my ass on, on a sofa all day and play video games? If you want. Uh, but you find out that life becomes fun. Why would you want to sequester yourself sitting on your ass on a sofa playing video games? 
when you have your whole life now and it's not a battle. Why do people do these things? It's a battle. You're playing video games. It's just another battle. It's a battle in a virtual reality. What do you do? You're battling others, right? I, I don't, I, I've never played a video game, nor do I desire to, but is there a video game where it's just about melting back together with yourself, the masculine feminine? Yeah. Adam and Isis coming back together, and then you allow all the light to come into your life, and you have realization beyond into the other realms, and yet so grounded here in the planet. Is there a video game called I Am Enlightened? I doubt it. Even a video game, sitting on your ass uh, all day playing video games, you are battling, trying to overcome something. The challenge to each and every one of you, all of you now, is to become the receivers, to let it into your life, to get over the battle you're having with the abundance, and that's all you're doing is you're battling it. And you know it's it's kind of fun, I guess, up to a point. But then why not just receive? Why not just? And it's that simple. You are this plant. <laughs> you, all of you, are this planet's metaphysicians. You are. The planet, the other humanity, is relying on you. You are creating the new physics. And now the challenge is a big one. Stop battling. If you find yourself battling for everything, if for anything, stop. Take a deep breath. It's an old habit. It's an entrenched habit. Light does not need to battle light. Light does not need to battle the darkness at all. It does not need to overcome anything. It simply needs to receive. That's it. It's going to be a challenge, and you're going to, <laughs> to, to do this, to stop battling things within yourself first and then other people, but start with yourself and receive. And then you're going to try this, and you're instantly going to go back to the battling. We'll have to work hard at receiving. No, 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 no it's not the way it works. The Master allows the luminosity of the light to change the nature of reality in their life. And then everything else changes. The old paradigm on this planet of work, fight, work, fight, work, fight, and then maybe celebrate a little before you go back to work, fight, work, fight. It's done. It's over with. That is perhaps one of the biggest uh, overlays and flaws of mass consciousness. And it's time for that to change. And it's going to start with you. Uh, I've, <laughs> I've had this discussion with some of the other Ascended Masters. I told them what we're going to be doing, and they laughed and laughed and laughed. And they said, Adamus, you must be smoking something down there in Colorado, because that just ain't going to happen on the planet. I strongly disagree. I disagree because, A, you're the metaphysicians, you were the realm workers, you were the ones here on the planet. Even if you weren't a realm worker, you were doing the inner work that was so necessary to make all this happen. And now the next step, it's a big one. No battling. Receiving. Feel that. Feel what that's like for a moment in this beautiful safe space. Just receiving your light. Not, not some, something out there. Just your light. Not trying to overcome odds. Not trying to set up situations for yourself so you can try to overcome it. And so many of you do that. So many of you do that. Why do you do that? Why do you set up situations so that you can just overcome it? So you can overcome it. What you want to see how how high the next hurdle can be? And when you overcome that after falling down twenty times and really killing yourself, you're gonna put the hurdle even higher. Let's end that old, old paradigm on the planet and receive your light. It's that simple. Into your body, into every cell. Receive that light into your, into your consciousness, into your thoughts. Don't worry about the details, because they take care of themselves. Don't worry about 
how am I going to get my abundance? Dr forget abundance. Forget lack of abundance. Let that word go out of your vocabulary. Now it's about just receiving. And just receiving the luminosity of your own light. In doing so, you change the dynamics of your pure soul light, and then the ray of light that comes into this rea to create this reality, you change that luminosity, and it changes the nature of reality. Boom! That's it. That's it. You don't have to work at it. You don't have to slay it. There's nothing to fight anymore. Not, not even your own emotions or your emotional imbalances. And oh, good Lord, you fight your, your mind, your thoughts, your, ba uh, your, your old memories. Put down the swords. Put down the tricks. Put down the desire to see if you can jump a bigger hurdle. What you can do by letting yourself now receive your light will change the world. It starts. It has to start somewhere. And I told the other Ascended Masters, we're going to start it. We're going to start it right here, right now, today. You all can try to catch up later, but we're going to start it. That is the challenge that goes out to all. Receive. That's it. One word. Receive. I don't want you taking this word and writing long theses about it and, and writing these complex procedures. Take a deep breath and receive. You already know what you're receiving. You don't have to even think it out in your mind. You don't have to battle anything that would get in your way, any, any uh, obstacles. Because in true receiving, there are no obstacles. You don't have to work at it. If you find yourself working at receiving, stop. You've just gone into battle mode. Stop and just receive. Now that we're into the apocalypse, we're going to get practical about it. We're going to start changing a very old, ingrained habit within yourself and within human consciousness so that life is about receiving. Let's take a good deep breath with that. Good deep breath. You've been working so damn hard as realm workers, as earth workers, so damn hard on so many things. Now we've got this new variable, this new element available right now after Heaven's Cross. It is a new light. That's here for you. Let's begin using it by ending the battles. But in spite of that, this is the most amazing time. Now, back to energy. There are these energies that are available. And tied in with this, and this is a phenomena that's pretty much unique to those going through the uh, intense awakening process, uh, the later stages of awakening, the, the other important factor, and this is, this is a paradigm shift, um, that sounds so cliché-ish, Calder. Could you come up with a? This is a real big change in the way things are going. <laughs> You're used to working for things, struggling for things, uh, efforting for things. I've talked to you before about goals and plans. Let them go. Let them go. You cannot goal yourself way yourself into enlightenment. Uh, you cannot. You cannot. You can have your little daily plans, I guess, to, to make sure the the regular mundane human things are taken care of. But enlightenment should not, cannot be a goal a at all. You're used to struggling for things, uh, and it's been that way not just in this lifetime, but many. Uh, and, and from my perspective, it is harsh. It is colorless. It is a very strange way of doing things, suffering your way into whatever it is. Now, with the opening of these uh, 21 caverns that, that hold the energy, and, and I'm Shambra, 
This isn't just a metaphor. It is very real. These energies I'm talking about aren't for somebody else. They're for you. And there's been so much confusion in the last month. I'm actually quite surprised. People not knowing what to do. It's so easy. What happens in the real shift for you, not necessarily for the rest of the planet, but for you? Something that Tobias talked about a long time ago, and you're going to resist it. You're going to uh, think about it too much. You're going to do everything other than just let it happen until the point you get tired of some more suffering and suffering and struggling. But the concept is very simple. Henceforth, it comes to you. Real simple. Henceforth, it comes to you. Years ago, Tobias gave the example. You get on a bicycle. The typical way of doing things is you get on the bicycle and then you start pedaling. And you start sweating a little bit, you start breathing heavier, and you ride through the landscape. You ride down the streets, up the hills, through the village or wherever else, along the uh, river. You're paddling, you're exerting, and the landscape is going by you. That is duality, that is old, and it doesn't need to exist that way anymore. Now, you get on the bike, and you just sit there. You do not paddle. You do not move. Even the bicycle really doesn't have to do anything, and the landscape moves. You are stationary. The landscape moves. Now, the nice thing about this is that you don't have to do anything other than receive, and you're really bad at receiving. Scale 1 to 10, you get about a 0.5 for your ability to receive, (laughs) truly. And if that were not so, I do not make this up, and I'm not just saying it to insult you. Uh, if, If that were not so, We wouldn't be having the discussion, and we wouldn't be in situations that are a little embarrassing. I'm getting people mad at me again today, but we wouldn't be having these discussions. You're not so good at receiving. This concept, very, very real concept, it comes to you. You get on that old bike, or new bike, you get on that bike, and you just sit back. It all comes to you. It's not linear. It's not like going down the road anymore where the landscape just starts moving while while you're just sitting here. It's not linear. The exact perfect thing comes to you. Perfect, not not based on what God thinks is perfect, because God really doesn't care, or some other being, or your anything else. Perfect for you by you. It comes to you. Don't blink. Don't doubt, is what I'm saying. Don't blink. Let it happen. Let it come to you. This is the new energy. This is also the way these crystal caverns work. They're simply, they attract, they store, they distribute energy. That's all. That energy is going out right now as we talk. But you're still riding your bike down the road trying to find something, God knows what, enlightenment, happiness, joy, a new car, a relationship, or sex for one night. I don't know, but (laughs) now, now it is. Take a deep breath. You get on that bike, and it comes to you. It comes to you. Whatever you need, huge volumes of energy, but energy that will manifest in a variety of different things. Health, perhaps. Some of you are still going through health issues. Energy is there to clear out the body. Abundance, uh, money. Let's just let's dissolve the monetary system because it actually is all an illusion anyway. Uh, you know your credit cards, your your money, your cash, and everything. It really is. We're going to be working on a new system of energy abundance. It doesn't. Uh, Calder and uh, Linda's really arguing about this. Yeah, ultimately it'll put some dollars in your pocket so you can play the game, but the real abundance is at a much uh, more pure and real level, much more pure. So you'll bring it in on this non-monetary level, and then let it come in and make a lot of cash, put it in your pocket. You come to the point, you have, you, I ask you to come to the point where you never have to worry about money again. You don't have to balance your bank accounts or worry about if a shirt is $5 or $500. 
It doesn't matter. It's inconsequential. It is stupid. It's not enlightenment. It's not. It isn't. What you pay for a shirt or your milk or any, anything like that, it's not about enlightenment. That's so old. So back to the point. There is a tremendous amount of energy. You got that? You understand that? It's in 21 Ks. Pretty simple stuff. It's crystals. It's really pretty. A lot of colors. You're not going to go take the crystals. They are a mechanism for attracting appropriate energy, storing energy, distributing energy. That's what they're here for. They're very pretty, but that's number one. It's here. And there's a lot of other energy as well. You've been working with it, but this is the new stuff. Secondly, secondly, it comes to you. That's going to be your bigger challenge. Most of you, you're still a little tentative about this whole cave crystal thing, like not sure. And uh, when we talked last month about it, it basically said, make it for yourself, nobody else, whatever you're choosing. Don't be afraid of it, but don't limit it to little things like, I need a thousand dollars to to fix a car, buy a computer, or anything else. That's so, that's so minuscule. Let that energy come in big. Most of you are still very confused. I'm not sure what to do about it, you say. You're scratching your head. You're thinking, well, I'll pay bills with it. Awakening people don't have bills. They don't. No, I'm, I'm serious. They don't have bills. Bills are a debt accumulation, an energy deficit. Uh, somebody, a, a master does not have that. Does not have that. They, 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 don't, they, they don't have debt. It, it just, they are. It goes back to that premise, I exist. Did I say I exist in debt? Did I exist in stupidity? No, I, ex <laughs> I exist. I exist. That's all that matters. So, here's what we're coming to. It comes to you, and that's going to be a tough one. A particularly tough one following last month, where I talked about mass abundance for you, mass energy. Now we're going to put the two together, so you'll really be confused. It comes to you. We're going to do a mirab. I'm going to ask John, I didn't give him any advance warning, but ask John, play some of the nice, nice music, the polite music <laughs> that was played during the break uh, for those listening online. And remember, awakening is not polite. It is not. It is not. It's brutal, but it's fun. So we're going to do a mirab. Lights down, please. This is a mirab. A mirab is a shift of consciousness. This is a big one, because it is about can you let it come to you? For today's mirab, we're going to, we're going to use this whole example of these 21 crystal caverns, ready to beam energy to you. It's going to come to you, my dear friends. You're not going to go to it. Recently, I took a group, small group, to these caverns just to feel them and experience them. Told them not to touch. Just wanted them to feel what it was like in one of the caverns. Today, we're not going to go there. Today, it's about you letting it come to you. Part of you is going to resist this because this is not the way your reality system has been up to now. Part of you is going to be wondering if you can do it right or if it's real. Part of you is going to fall asleep because you're really tired. What we're doing here is this mirab of letting energy come to you now. You're sitting on the bike, stationary. By the way, this is natural. This is the way things work in the most natural state of being. Having to effort, struggle, work hard, limit yourself, that's unnatural. The natural way is allowing everything to come to you. So take a deep breath and feel into these energies of the illuminated free world bank. These are your energies. They're here for you. 
here for you. The question is, will you receive them? Now, stay where you are. Don't, don't go off to these caves, but stay where you are. Feel for a moment into what you call your heart, your essence. This thing I talked about today, your I am. The I exist. Feel into that for a moment. I exist. When you can get down to this core level, I exist. How amazing. And the energies come to you. When you're off screwing around, when you're off searching for something, the energies really can't come to you. But when you're in such a place of trust, a place of awareness, the energies can come to you. And there are tremendous energies, my dear friends, not just on a first come basis, not just 44 points for answering the best question. The energies are available to all of you. There is no supervisor at the door. There's no judge determining how much you're worth. It's you, just you and these energies. And they come to you. They come to you. That's why they're here. It's going to be quite a shift of, well, you could say patterns, to let things come to you. You're still going to want to jump in there with some of the old ways, manipulation, control, over-management, planning, and limitations. Still going to be the tendency to do that. The challenge, the beauty letting it come to you. When your mind's going to jump in and say, what's it? How much is there? What does it look like? What does it do? This is where you take a deep breath and you get back into that simple, I am, I exist. doesn't matter. doesn't matter what color it is. doesn't matter what vehicle or pathway it takes to get to you. It just comes. There's only one thing that is going to prevent it. It's you. You've been familiar with patterns of whether it's illness, lack, loathing, discomfort, not being present in this reality, whatever it is, you've been used to those patterns. The real challenge is going to be, can you let it come full on, full on? Or are you going to, going to try to stop some of it, all of it? So, but just a little bit at a time, I'm not quite worthy enough yet. It's totally up to you. It's your game. It's your game, your game show. Doesn't matter. But this energy, it's here right now. It's here for you, it comes to you. You're going to want to start defining it. You're going to get into your brain and start defining. Don't, or at least try to avoid it. Let it just come to you. Go beyond thinking in terms of, well, does it mean a new job? Does it mean winning the lottery or anything like that? Go beyond that. Keep it pure from the I am to the I receive. 
I am, therefore I receive. Without question, without limit, without controls or management systems, I receive. You're used to searching for things. In this shift, you don't have to, it comes to you. Well, you're going to feel a bit uncomfortable with it, saying, but, 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 I have to do something. No, just let it come to you. Just let it come to you. It sets the mind on fire. The mind thinks, well, no, so I have to do something. No, you just take a deep breath. Come to you. That's all you have to do. You don't even have to think in terms of if it's a new car, a new house, any of that. It just comes to you. It's going to be so simple, so simple that for a split moment you're going to think that you didn't work hard enough to earn it. You're going to feel a little guilty. You're going to want to. Have a way of measuring how much you give yourself. Don't. Take a deep breath. Let it come to you. Unrestricted. You earned it already. You did. You earned it by all these lessons that you've gone through. And by the way, let's be done with any lessons now. Let's be done with all lessons. You've earned it because of your, what you would call your diligence or your commitment to yourself and your awakening. That's why it's there. The energies come in now, they come to you because finally you brought them from the other realms. You have brought them, not me. This illuminated free world bank is not mine, it's yours. Why you don't see the name Saint Germain in it? It's yours. You brought it here. You finally broke that barrier that kept these energies off in the other realms. You finally said, "It's time to receive," and that's why they're brought into these caverns, stored in these beautiful crystals, the likes of which you've never seen before, and now they're ready for distribution. Ready for you? Can you let it come to you? Not go searching for it. Can you let it come to you? Easily, gracefully. Take a deep breath. It comes. It comes. Don't think in terms of paying a bill. Don't think in terms of just. A small human need. Let that energy flow in. Don't wrestle with it. Don't wonder if you're doing it right or wrong. Just let it come to you. It's that simple. I exist, therefore, energies are here. It's that simple. I am. Therefore, it is. That simple, my dear, my dear, dear Shambra. Sometimes I wonder how you do it. Sometimes it's so colorless, so harsh, so gray in the world that you've been playing in, the reality where you've been dreaming. It's amazing how your body is even held up at times. You've been struggling for it, going off trying to find it somewhere. Now, just let it come to you. Let it come to you. The universe, cosmos are filled with energies. They're absolutely filled with energies. The energies were 
put there, made there, from your passion, your passion to know thyself, to know thy God within, to, as you would say, return home. But what you find is home comes to you. Yes, home comes to you. It comes to you. So you could say there are there is such an abundance of energy that you created from your passion, your desire to know home, to be home. That's why these energies come into the 21 crystal caves now. It's not a fairy tale, it's very real. That's why finally allowed these energies to break through this invisible ceiling kept them away from you now they're here now I ask you once again can you allow these to come to you in your life unlimited no rules or guidelines Feel, if you would please, feel it come to you, filling you, filling your life, filling you. Let it come to you. Flowing into you. you to consider this for a moment. What is grace? What is grace? We played our little game show today. I had a lot of answers from Schumber about different things. So now I ask you the question, what is grace? Nice word. Got to be one of those polite words, I guess. Not a bad word. Grace. You are sitting here up the front as one of the game show contestants. What would your answer be about grace? Grace. I'll tell you what my answer is. Grace is the ability to receive, period. That's the definition of grace. Master allows the energies to serve them. That's grace. Without questioning how much or when, do I deserve it? Are there others in need? No. You don't ask those questions. That's out of grace. Grace. Grace is receiving energy. Without question, without doubt, grace, a master, allows energies to serve him without question, without question, period. That's grace, pure, simple, beautiful. These energies are here. They'll come to you if you allow them. They'll come to you if you stop playing the show, the game, the illusion. They'll come right now if you're in grace. So the question is, can you receive? Will you receive? Will you receive? without question, 
Why do I hear so many questions? Grace is receiving. Period. That's it. Let's take a deep breath. Let's have the lights back up. In our next gathering, we're going to get continue with the discussion of these energies. We're going to talk more about how it comes to you. You'll have plenty of opportunity in this next month to let energies come to you, to let a new reality come to you, to receive it, to be in grace with it. So let's take a deep breath. Now let's get back to our game show featuring uh, Artemis Saint-Germain. Uh, and the reason we play game show today, the wrap-up of this whole thing, was my dear friends, if your life was a game show, a talk show, would you even want to listen to it? <laughs> Probably not. So please change the game, play, change the show. Let's take a good deep breath as we bring this gathering of Shambra to a conclusion. A good deep breath in that grace of knowing that all is well in all. The second part of this was, it all comes to you, everything. Now, that's not just a nice saying, that's the way energy works and consciousness and what some people call the universe. You don't have to work for things. You can apply yourself when you choose. You can apply your creativity. You can apply your physical body at, at times when you want to. But you don't have to work at things. There's a big difference. Work is a term of the mind. It comes from the mind, work. And when somebody says to you, get to work, oh, wow. What if somebody said, get creative? Oh, okay, that's easy, just letting it come to you, letting the energies align in the way a master would, in a brilliant uh, symphony of energies working to serve you. So the Master's Club is an example of letting it come to you. The Crimson Circle team said, OK, it's time. It couldn't have been more obvious if you would have slapped them over the head with a two-by-four. The space becomes available next door. What are they waiting for? Everything is falling in place. Oh, but, oh, it's a lot, a lot of work and a lot of money. Shut up. It's there. Why are you pointing at me? I'm pointing over there <laughs> at the new space. <laughs> Shut up. It's, it's ready for you. So when they finally, the biggest, the biggest challenge in this whole thing was finally saying, let's do it. Why not? Why not have a bigger space? Whether you need it or not, that's not the point. You, you, people will justify, well, do I really need this? Get a nice car, a fast car, whether you need it or not. Why not? I, I just I don't understand that mentality. Well, I don't have the money. Well, there you go. It comes to you. You don't have the money. You start acting, being the master, and it's just there. It's just there. So they finally said, let's do it. Oh, nervous, nervous, anxiety. Why? Then you, Shambra, all around the world suddenly came forth with your pledges, with your, your money, and it was just there. It was just there. There's no mystery to this. There is no having to be uh, good at fundraising. Uh, they're not particularly good at fundraising. Uh, there is no having to market it. Uh, there's no having to. It's just Chamba, uh, join in, and that's it, and it comes to you. For everybody who participated financially or energetically, it's the same way. It just comes to you. And, and for those who really really energetically, financially participated. I mean, just like really felt it. Now I want you to feel into your life and let it come to you with the same ease and grace, minus all the worrying up front if you deserve it or if you need it. Let that part go. Let it all come to you. Love, love. 
and money, sure, why not? And health and just energy, creativity, whatever it is. You don't even have to define it. You don't have to say, <clears throat> universe, here's what I want. Uh, you don't have to because it's actually already there before you even think about it. And once you are in that state of consciousness, there's nothing ever to worry about again, ever. There's really not. Unless you want to go play in that sandbox for a while. Just some of you will. You'll say, ah, I, you know, there was something about the worrying and about the stress, and it made me feel heroic when I overcame all the odds. Go play in that sandbox, but don't forget that there's this other sandbox in the realm of and. It's already taken care of long before you even knew it. That's the way to live. If you find yourself in the brain, struggling with it, wondering about it, am I doing this right? Uh, now do I have to you know, turn to the west and then the north? You've, you've lost it. You just do it. And then you, you feel that grace of life and all of its energies coming in to serve you. That simple. Anything else, anything else is macchio. And, and I know what's going to happen. You're going to go out and play with this. And you do it halfway. I'll kind of try it, see if it comes to me. No, just go out and do it fully, uh, without thinking about it, without assessing the risks and the probabilities and are you doing it right or wrong, are you offending other people, any of that. Just do it. That's going to be the hard part. Does it align with your what you would call your morals and your values? Those are crap anyway. So just do it. No, they are. They are. They, they don't even look good on you anymore, your morals and values. Those are very old and very human. So let them go. Let them go. And finally, the P, point of presence. Point of presence. Something we've been talking about and will continue to talk about. Some of you know it as the now moment, but we define it here as a point of presence. Where are you right now? Where is your presence? Where is that brilliant, what you would call, flash of light or enlightenment or awareness? Is it off into tomorrow? Well, most of human consciousness actually is. It went out there. It's been out there for months now. They're not in their point of presence. They're out somewhere else exploring the potential futures because so many on Earth right now, billions and billions of humans are worried about what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next year. So their point of presence is not here right now. It's out exploring the potential of disaster, end of the world, end of the days of good things. It's out exploring the potential of fear and anxiety. So why do you think you've been feeling the way you have lately? You've been feeling them out somewhere else. But you can stay in your point of presence right here, right now. In this point of presence, everything comes to you. When you're out there, it doesn't. It's as simple as that. When you're here, it comes to you. When you're here and you're making conscious choices, it, in a sense, um, magnetizes you. It causes those things to now start flowing into your reality. You don't have to get specific. You don't have to say, I need a $1,000. But if you're in your point of presence and you've chosen abundance, it will be there. In the point of presence, health comes back, vitality, energies, everything in the point of presence. One thing that was unique in each and every one of them, uh, of these five, and who might be watching in online or here. One thing that was unique was they had a lot of struggles. 
You know, it's such a struggle to try to be a good human. It's such a struggle to try to uh, heal yourself. It's such a struggle to try to perfect yourself. Such a struggle to be a better person. And it doesn't work. It does not work. And for each and every one of these five, after going through a lot of struggles and trying to make themselves better, and trying to make themselves spiritual, or, or just nice, or not so flawed, or not with uh, weaknesses, after a lot of struggling with this, and a lot of crazy dreams, a lot of crazy dreams, they kind of work hand in hand. They woke up one morning, each and every one of them, one morning, and suddenly they just got it. They just got it. Uh, it was, it's kind of a, it's an interesting study in a way, because after all the struggle with no real end in sight, not, not knowing that it was going to be within a week or a month or a year, no real end in sight, they just got it. It came together. And they woke up that morning, and instead of a feeling of struggle, how do I do enlightenment? How can I become realized? How can I be this person I have tried to be, that I thought I wanted to be? They woke up in the morning, after a rather intense night of dreams, and there was a calmness. And there wasn't all that activity in the mind. and. There wasn't that struggle. There wasn't a great big question mark sitting right in front of them when they woke up. Instead, they woke up and they took a deep breath and they just smiled. I got it, they said. I got it. Now, it wasn't lightning bolts. It wasn't like some of the experiences that some of you have had with cosmic consciousness, the feelings of tremendous. Uh, soaring into other realms, but also with a tremendous imbalance in the human body and mind. It was a calmness. And it was without all the questions, and all the nagging doubts, and all the wondering when. It was a very, for each and every one of them, a calm and peaceful moment. It wasn't the type of moment they wanted to run down the street screaming uh, at the top of their lungs, I'm enlightened, I'm enlightened. It was just there. And it was such a feeling of relief. Uh, no tension, no, no wondering what's going to happen next. And not because they thought about not thinking about what was going to happen next, trying not to think about it, but there just wasn't the thought. They didn't have to try to think about the natural state of enlightenment. It was just there. They didn't have to wonder what's coming with this world, because in a way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, they didn't carry it on their shoulders, because they know that it's absolutely in perfection, the way it is. And they didn't wonder how much light they brought into their body, or how much of their ancestors they've released or not released, or whether they're going to get cancer, or uh, how old they're. All of this ceased, just like that for each and every one of them. It was just all there, realized. It was actually a feeling of simplicity and grace, one that cannot be thought of in the mind. Not, you can't think your way into grace or simplicity. You can allow it. And it happened to these five because, well, they'd, they'd reached the end of their limits. You, if, if I had introduced you to them a year ago and said, here is the one that is going to be realized, one of, one of the five in a year from now. You would have thought that I was joking or lying. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have imagined, because in a way, they were an emotional wreck. Their lives were so imbalanced. They were so fragile, so very fragile, not sensitive. Sensitive is okay, fragile, like they're going to break apart. They were so on the borderline of joining the other hundred or so who crossed over, so on the borderline. 
you, you wouldn't have thought that would, you would want that as your standard, your example of somebody who is going to be one of the five first masters on the planet. No, you wouldn't have. But, but I bring that up to each and every one of you. I bring it up because your journey is so much the same. The questions, the doubts, the wondering when, the trying hard, the trying to be a, a, a good or better human, each one of these five finally said no more. In a way, they gave up. They stopped. They were so fragile, they were afraid they were going to blow apart, and they probably would have, but they just stopped. And they stopped trying. They stopped working at it. And they were kind of in a, a no place. A no zone for a while. That's what happens when you just stop. It feels terribly uncomfortable for the human, but not for the master. Terribly uncomfortable to uh, stop the ceaseless activities. Terribly uncomfortable not to have a program for that day, not to have to study your spirituality or practice it. Actually, not even to think about it. Uh, terribly uncomfortable because it, it's it's not the suit of clothes you've been wearing. It's not you. It's hard to identify with that. But they had no place else to go other than the other side, so they just stopped. And when they did, that momentum, that directive of fulfillment, was <laughs> finally able to come in. All the aspects, all the parts and pieces, all of the fragments, all of the lost parts of themselves were able to come in. And what really happened in that, uh, uh, that big night of dreams that preceded their waking up in the morning into realization, what really happened was that all that the singular being that they thought they were, and that you think you are, that singular being, uh, suddenly really opened up and allowed in the and. You can't think your way into and. You can know what it means, but you can't think your way into it. You cannot work your way into it. You can't earn your way into it. You can understand the, the energetic concept that you're not a singular human. Uh, you have been for many, many lifetimes, living in a singular reality and believing it, believing this reality. That's kind of the joke, uh, but it's a good joke and a bad joke. That's kind of a very interesting lesson uh, – not lesson, experience uh, – very interesting experience in uh, what the perception of what consciousness can do uh, to live in singularity. But you were never intended to be that way. And I tell you this as we open up our Transhuman series. Transhuman means going beyond just the human, transcending humanness, not, not going out of it. And that's one of the common misperceptions. Oh, let's go from being human to being Superman. No, you don't. Uh, there's still the human, and there is so much more. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very simple physics of enlightenment, and it's receiving that and. And that's what these five did. Each and every one of them, a night of dreams, kind of like, kind of like uh, the Last Supper, <laughs> but uh, but doing it in the dream state, uh, doing kind of the, in a way, a, a ceremony, a final bringing together, and then the awakening in the morning. When was the last time you woke up in the morning feeling absolutely refreshed? Not recently. <laughs> Don't even kid yourself or me. Not recently. You wake up in the morning feeling groggy at best, uh, tired often, but they woke up in the morning and not feeling like um, they just drank 20 cups of coffee and had a lot of uh, false energy. They woke up in the morning and it was simply feeling clear, clean. Uh, Calder's throwing that word in. Thank you, uh, Virgo. Uh, simply feeling clean on the inside. Uh, when was the last time you felt really clean on the inside, uh, really without the grit and without the, the dust and the dirt and the 
grime uh, and the oil and the garbage, you know. You know. Uh, but they woke up just feeling refreshed and, and not, not thinking to themselves, oh, geez, I've got to go get a T-shirt that says, you know, I'm, I'm an enlightened being, uh, in, in case you're into T-shirts. Uh, but just re- having relaxed into enlightenment. And the biggest thing was, the most important thing was they stopped trying. Now, granted that they did a lot of work, like you. They went through a lot of hells and a lot of, a lot of um, insights. Uh, they went through a lot. But all of a sudden when they stopped, it was like now everything they had done, all the work that they had done, all the things that they had learned, everything was suddenly able to swoop in. Uh, to be within. It wasn't just out there in pieces anymore. It just came in. What did they do the rest of the day? You wonder? Now, you know, they didn't didn't say, I'm a master, either. It's just like, I just feel so clean and clear. Uh, And later on, it wasn't until actually later on they started to say, is this realization? Is is this enlightenment? And then it's like, ah, it doesn't matter because I'm not searching for it anymore. I'm not trying for it anymore. Therefore, it must be. If I'm not, if that is not my goal, then I must have made it. If suddenly I don't care about it, then I must be. What did they do the rest of the day? Well, they did what they would normally do. But they didn't do it with the stress and with the wondering, uh, uh, you know, am I contracted some disease? Oh God, did a mosquito bite me? Do I have Zika virus? And they just went about their day. But could you imagine for a moment going about your day and not having that friction, not having that weight, not having that nagging doubt, uh, not wondering what's coming next, just doing it. They had simple days. They, some of the, a few of them went to the grocery store because they were hungry. That's what you do. Uh, they didn't suddenly manifest the food in front of them, but they can. But, but they didn't. They, they, they went to the grocery store, but there was an ease. And it it wasn't uh, the stress of going to the store and the stress of worrying, oh God, are these organic and are these uh, vegetarian? And uh, it's like they didn't worry about that. Or is there too much sugar? Or there wasn't that stress. It was meaningless. And and they didn't have to fight, uh, resist an urge to go buy a big chocolate cake. And say, oh no, no, I really want that. But I. It just wasn't there. The stress wasn't there. And if they bought the cake, fine. If they didn't, fine. But you know what that's like? Oh, God, I would love that, but I can't eat that. Oh, stop tormenting me with your, your chocolate. Did any of them go to Costco for lunch? No, I don't think they went food sampling at Costco. At least that's what uh, I don't know Costco, but Calder is telling me no, do not do food sampling there. And and uh, a few of them went to their jobs, but uh, three of them had a, uh, two of them had a job. Three of them did not work. Uh, that should tell you something. They didn't have a regular job, and uh, a few of them took their uh, beloved pets out for a walk in the park. And uh, two of them took a very long nap, thought, hey, if that last night's sleep was good, I'm going to take a nap. It's going to be even better <laughs> when I wake up. They just took a nap because they could. They continued on with their life, but with a whole different perspective, not a mental perspective, uh, something very experiential. They were there. Mm. Uh, they were there. Could you imagine for a moment uh, when the body not feeling the tiredness and not feeling the, um, the jet stream of your ancestors uh, it's sucking you back in. A- and th- it just wasn't there. I mean, they knew, they all realized, you know, their biological family, but that suction wasn't there. And I would say the biggest thing was just the mind stuff wasn't there. What am I doing? Who am I? 
When am I going to get enlightened? None of that was there. Could you imagine a difference in your day? They didn't go out and perform little feats of magic, making uh, gold coins appear in their hands. It was meaningless. Uh, that's what a human does. But a master doesn't have to play that game. Uh, the, the master doesn't have to go impress others by you know, producing things out of nothing. It's meaningless. That actually drags you more back into being a singular human than it does into singularity of the master. And there's a big difference. The words sound the same, but there is a huge difference in the words. It, uh, uh, one had a, had a relationship. Four did not. Uh, that should t <laughs> something. <laughs> that there are some who can do a really good relationship. Yes. <laughs> Would you like a drink? <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> relationships are difficult, and those who can do it are are truly admired and honored. But relationships, uh, while you're going through this, are difficult. Uh, but four did not have relationships. One did, and that one did not go and tell their uh, – what do you call it these days? Their partner, um, live-in, uh, whatever uh, – did not run and tell the person, Oh, you wouldn't believe what happened. I'm enlightened. Uh, I'm enlightened, and you're not. <laughs> or, or you know that thing you've been uh, laughing at me about for all these years, for that group I went to? Well, it finally happened. Uh, they didn't, there was no need to mention it. Can you just imagine that for a moment? You wake up in the morning after about ten lifetimes of really hard work trying to be a spiritual person, and then you, get, you know, let it all go, and suddenly it's all there. You wake up in the morning, and it's just this feeling of, I'm alive. I am that I am. I am here. No battle about it anymore. No trying to make yourself any better. I guess you would call it a, an acceptance, an allowing. I am that I am. And with that, the realization, I am here. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a human. I'm functioning on this planet. And I am all these other things. And that was what they finally allowed in. That's, that's what sank in. If there was any message that they had for each and every one of you, which I, I asked them, uh, any message from five who have actually allowed it, would be, stop trying so hard. Stop working on your human self. It will get you no further. It will maybe make you think you're doing something. It'll occupy your time. It'll give you a certain sense of uh, uh, mission, goal, battle. But ultimately, the five would tell you, just stop it right now. Be the human and be everything else that comes along. That's it. And then, then you'll have a night of dreams, and you'll wake up in the morning, and you'll have that sense of clear and clean, because that directive of fulfillment, that bringing everything together, is there. All this is natural. Yes, there's a lot we talk about. When, I, when I'm talking with you, uh, it's to reassure you. I think there is that, that constant dilemma, am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right path? I'm actually not really teaching you anything. I'm just reassuring you. I give you some words. I d do a little distracting, but I'm saying to you, <laughs> you're on the right path. Uh, now stop trying to be so right and just allow. We're coming into this year, this series this year, and uh, how, do, how do I paint this picture for you? You've done all the work. Uh, those of you who are still here, those of you who haven't left and nothing wrong with those who have left, but they wanted to keep working on the human. Uh, but for those of you who are still here, this is the year when you just take that deep breath. You stop trying. 
I mean everything in your life. It doesn't mean that uh, Calder's asking me, for instance, well, so you don't build a beautiful uh, master's club. Well, no, that, is that trying or is that just being creative? Uh, it, it's work, but you're not trying to just improve yourself. You know, what the, you know the difference between you go out and build something just because you can, or you, you create a song because you can, or you create a, a class because you can, or do a painting because you can. That's not working. That's just living. But versus the constant grinding away, you can almost feel the gears grinding away as you're trying to work on yourself, improve yourself, make yourself more spiritual, uh, make that human better. It's time to let that go. Be, be really good. Be allowing of the human. And then you start to realize the and. There's so much more. That's where we're going. That's why I want to call it the Transhuman Series. It works. <laughs> it's called reality basing. I'll get into that later. Next on the list. You've been working hard, unfortunately. You've been working hard on uh, all this rather than just allowing it. But you've been working hard uh, all your life, uh, your spirituality, your humanness, your job, and everything else. We've been together for a long time uh, doing a lot of this. And the interesting thing that's happening – I mentioned it in the last show – the interesting thing that is happening – and I've given it um, a title, an Adamus title which I'll reveal in just a moment, and Linda will write down on the board, and she'll know how to spell it without uh, <laughs> worrying about it. The interesting that thing that happens – you've been working on pieces over here, and pieces over here, and pieces under there, and pieces up here. You've been working on all this. Sometimes it's hard to see the whole picture, because you're, you're having to inch the human forward a little bit. You're having to inch the biology forward. You're having to struggle to survive and maintain. You try to you, – you know how you move a little over here and you move a little over there? Kind of like um, Calder is giving me the bad example of shoveling snow. I don't know where he came up with that, but you know, you, you shovel a little here, you shovel a little there, and pretty soon you kind of – it all gets shoveled. That's what you're in right now. You're in the place where energies have moved here, and they've moved there, and they moved there. You're at a point now that I call the Directive of Fulfillment. I kind of like that. Yeah, would you write that? You're in – and it's my own term uh, – the Directive of Fulfillment. Now, that's a good thing. And I talked about it a little bit uh, at our last show in Munich, that something changed, something shifted. and. What it is, meaning that you've done so much damn hard work, and you've been – you know what you have? You, you have tenacity. You have – you're stubborn. You, you weren't going to give up. <laughs> you're really damn stubborn beings. And that's gotten you through. It's not your effort. It's not your hard work. It's your stubbornness that, in spite of all the hard work, your stubbornness got you through. It got you to this point. Now what happens in the Directive of Fulfillment and I use the word directive because it's like uh, saying it's like a universal law, but you're kind of making it up for the first time. It's a directive. It's going to happen. Directive also meaning direction, movement of something. Uh, it's also a directive, like a command. It's like this is going to happen. A directive of fulfillment. You've kind of crossed that line to the point where now, actually, believe it or not, you can glide. Yeah, there's been so much inertia, movement, working, pushing. Suddenly, suddenly there's a gravitation – and I use the word gravity not just like with Earth gravity, but a movement, a suction of energy. Gravity of fulfillment. Good, yeah. Good. I like the way that looks. Uh, we could fancy it up in a nice graphic for our next meeting or for the shout uh, recap thing that you do. The direct – it will make it look official, like it came from the court, you know, like a, like a law office, the directive of fulfillment. And then people believe it. You make it look, you know, legal. Oh, 
gosh, I got a directive. So <laughs> the directive of fulfillment means that there is a gravitational, an energy force that is now in play, undeniable, absolutely uh, in motion, that brings you into fulfillment. Even if you didn't work on anything else anymore, there's enough momentum in everything that you've done, including and especially including your allowing, that all the forces are bringing everything together into completion, fulfillment. You don't have to work at it anymore. Actually, you never did, but you thought you did. You can take a deep breath and watch yourself go into your mastery, your enlightenment. It's pretty phenomenal, pretty amazing. The mind sitting over there would be chattering, saying, yeah, but you have to do so No, you don't have to do anything. Well, but you have to do – no, you don't have to do anything. Uh, if you want to do something, allow. Uh, but there's so much momentum that it's going to happen. That's the really good news. It means it's related to uh, our session, our first session. Uh, it means you don't have to work at it. You don't have to mediate it. You don't have to try anymore. You don't have to try to be a better person. There's more spiritual person, a more intelligent person. Uh, any of that, you have a free pass at this point. Now, there should be screaming in the aisles, but I, 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 think, that, I think that pause uh, – I think that pause was disbelief. <laughs> Is he pulling our leg? Oh, I think oh, – I know what it was. That pause was – he must be talking about the other per people in here. It's not talking about me. It couldn't be that. No, you got a free pass. You put in your time. Unfortunately, you put in too much effort. You endured. And now there is such a uh, gravity, a momentum taking place. Uh, don't ask me how long it's going to take, because I know that's your next question. Uh, it doesn't – but what does it matter? All I'm saying is you don't have to do anything anymore. You don't have to regulate your thoughts, monitor your – whether your emotions are good. You don't have to balance and check your energies or anything like that. You don't have to do that anymore. The inertia does it. So try this. Rather than trying to resist that natural inertia into enlightenment, rather than trying to fight against it or wonder, is it real? Does it, is it really going to happen? Is Adama just telling us, just take a deep breath and go with the flow? It's kind of like hop into the canoe and let the current take you this time, rather than trying to build the river, fill it with water, and then fight uphill against it, upstream against it. Well, that's what you've been doing. I've got to dig the ditch, I've got to fill it with water, make it flow, and then paddle upstream. Uh, no, hop in the canoe and let's glide with it from now on. When you're gliding uh, – let's do some music at this point. It's a little Murabi kind of music, but this is like taking a ride in a canoe or if you don't like canoes, a rowboat, but with no oars. You don't have to – no oars. Taking a ride down your river of life uh, – with – not down – with your river of life. And that's a kind of floating along on a sunny afternoon, not having to do anything other than just relax. Wouldn't that be nice? You kick back, uh, and it's a padded canoe you know, or, or boat. You know, a lot of times I've seen boats and they're kind of hard seats uh, and they're, they're rather austere. But you've created this really magnificent, beautiful boat. It's, it's cushioned. Uh, there's no motor on it. There's no oars because you don't need them. And you don't even need a little fan to keep you cool because the breeze from your journey is going to do that. And oh, there's a little mini bar there. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and there's nobody else around, so you could be naked. And, and, yeah. And there's no flies around where well, there are, but they're not going to bother you. 
nor mosquitoes because with no clothes on you you know don't want to have to worry about mosquitoes so this is this is now your time it's a beautiful time and it's a little weird just hop in hop in it's very soft plush and uh, oh by the way there's some snacks there uh, too so to enjoy the journey now you hop in and you start just floating down the river and you realize that river represents the momentum the flow that you've created it's going right to enlightenment now you get to sit in your cushion boat and you get to actually for once in your life enjoy the ride you get to watch the scenery the birds the trees and there's no hurry by the way that's where i say you're wondering okay now with the directive of fulfillment oh, how many days you know you're in this nice boat gliding gracefully in the river and and by the way there's music on the boat too Johan of course uh music yeah and playing nice little sunny afternoon on the river and nobody else around and you actually get to enjoy the scenery nature look there's a mama bear and a baby bear playing in the water over on the banks there look there's birds flying everywhere there's a turtle or two in the water there's some deer running in the field you know you never really took the time to enjoy that you're just so busy working so hard studying efforting powering you know, this boat doesn't need any power whatsoever on a natural current of energy. And you get to put your hands in the water and really feel it. You were always paddling against it, but now you get to put your hand in the cool water and have that sensual experience and splash a little water over your naked body and smile for once. And you know without a shadow of a doubt that this boat your I am boat is going to take you to enlightenment. You don't even worry about it. You you don't worry if you have enough food or drink or you don't worry about getting sunburned on your naked body any of that. Now it's just the time to enjoy. and you feel a little guilty like oh shouldn't i be doing something no you did it already you put in your time your effort you put in all the fears and the hard days no now is the time to ride you put your hand in the water and it feels so good and all of a sudden your hand feels kind of oh it's kind of scraping against the bottom uh, you pull your hand out quickly uh, you look in your hand and there's gold coins there's gold coins you just put your hand in your water in other words the abundance is there too everything you need is there because you've done so much you've created a gravity an energy movement that now cannot be undone it cannot be undone i call it the directive of fulfillment like an official order It's also kind of now, I guess, 
or it could be your own personal universal law. It's just going to happen. I don't care what forces try to interfere. It's not going to happen. Not going to work. If there's external forces, other people, mass consciousness, Palladians. <laughs> I don't like Palladians. It's not going to happen. There's too much inertia, gravity. This ride is for you to enjoy now. I've said it a few times before, but I'll remind you now. This is going to be the best time of your life. I know there's an eagerness for enlightenment and all the rest of that, but. This is the best time. You're fresh out of、uh, humanness, into transhumanism, but you still have all those fresh reminders and experiences. You're still biology. You still have a certain <laughs> beautiful innocence about you. This is the best time now, best of all. So I ask you to enjoy it. We'll make up a nice graphic or something for our next meeting or whatever. I, I like to call it this: the directive. Of fulfillment, officially decreed. Not something that comes just from the mind, but this is real. It's going to happen. So, just allow. Just allow. And enjoy. Let's take a good deep breath together. Ah, wow.、Hmm. Feel good so far?、Yeah. Good, 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 good. That's hard for most people to understand this effortless part because humans are acclimated and programmed to pushing on something in order to make it work, on using an exertion of energy and force. Of power to make something change, but the true magi understands there is absolutely no need for that force or power whatsoever. Magi understands it is simply a matter of making that choice and getting out of the human's way. Actually, in a way, Caldera、uh, really summarized this entire shout at the beginning by by saying. Things happen on levels which the human doesn't understand, nor should have to understand. But it's getting that human out of the way, so the I am can bring about what is greater than you, what your mind or imagination can possibly imagine. There's so much in that, Chambra. You struggle and toil at times with what your thought, from a limited, imprisoned human, would like to have, and then you try to use power to make it happen. You try to force it, and then you you are so hard on yourself when it doesn't work the way the human wants it to work. You beat yourself. Try. Now, just getting yourself out of the way. Try realizing that as we go forward in this, you're going to have human desires, human issues and concerns. You will also have the and. You will also have the what you could say the the divine perspective, a very free and open perspective. Please understand that. Whatever it is that is being chosen, not just from the human survival mode, but from the 
grace of the I am mode will simply come without effort. That, that will be challenging, challenging because you're going to feel like you, the human, is not doing anything. And the human has to effort, has to push, has to use power. What you're going to be learning here in these next eleven shouts of ours is that there is no need for any pushing. It's going to feel awkward. It's going to feel like you're walking outside onto a crowded public street without clothes on, totally naked, really, because it's going to feel awkward and you're going to feel, what have you forgotten? Uh, is that, uh, what are people going to say? Well, first of all, they're not going to see you. It's not an emperor's clothes thing. They're just not going to see you because they're on a whole different playing field called power. They're not going to see you. They're not going to care about you unless you choose for them to do so. You're going to feel naked because you don't have on the suit of armor of power that everybody wears out there. And you're going to feel vulnerable for a moment. And then you're going to realize there's no need for that armor anymore. There's no need for that power anymore in your life. And then you're going to realize that things just come to you in ways that the human mind could not have dreamt or imagined. That would be another challenge. You're so used to thinking about what you want, but the thinking, A, is generally not coming from your real thoughts. They're not really yours. They belong to your ancestors. They belong to mass consciousness. They're not really yours. You're so used to thinking in terms of uh, the basics, basics, uh, a salary, uh, a, a car that works, uh, a house that you can sleep in, and uh, those type of things. And those don't really matter. They, they really don't. I know to the human, they might, oh, but, but I have to have those first. No, actually, you're going to realize they just don't matter. And you're going to hit a point in this year where you're going to get mad first at yourself and then at me. And you're going to say, why have I wasted so much time, so many lifetimes, on the pursuit of such humanly things at the uh, absolute um, uh, forgetting or not seeing of what was really important? Why was I wasting so much time on things that were going to be there anyway if I had just allowed myself to go to the next level of consciousness? Why was I so short-sighted in just focusing on paying the bills, feeding myself, having a job, those things, when those are just going to be there naturally when I'm free? Those things, it's humorous in one respect and sad in another respect. It's humorous to see all this effort going into such mundane things, really mundane things, surviving, pretty mundane. It's boring, uh, and that's why you're here. You recognized it was boring. It's sad to see how much of a person's lifetime and potential is wasted in a way when really those things are taken care of. I have to underline that and stress that. Those things that you worry about, uh, the, the basics – Tobias talked about them years ago – abundance, health, relationships, and to a degree self-worth. But those basics are automatically taken care of in the powerless life. Those things are automatically feeling in ways you couldn't imagine. Oh, I know. I see the linear mind paths you walk down at times. You plan out a life. What do I have to do about a job? What do I have to do about the, just the day-to-day -day taking care of the human physical, what do I have to do about my body and about what I eat and about chemicals and all the rest of that? And then it stops there. Uh, it, it limits right there. 
And everything then is designed around these basic human survival things. It, those things don't matter that, that you're worrying about now. And you're going you're gonna to get upset with yourself and then with me sometime, probably about six months from now, and say, why did I spend so much time worrying about things that were already taken care of by you? Why did I worry about mundane things? And you know, it's amazing what happens as we go into the power of this life. Your, your life will be turned upside down in many ways, and that's okay. It's the end. You're, gonna, you're still going to be here, and you're still going to be continuing on, and your life's going to be turned upside down, and it's going to be amazing and fun. Because this time, it's not going to be from a singular perspective. It's not going to be, oh, my whole life is turned upside down. It's going to be like, oh, my life here turned upside down, and here I am, a grand free being. doesn't matter. You get to experience all of it. And you're going to realize that there's things that are going to happen in your life that are going to be beyond what this human here could have imagined. Because i got to tell you right now, as we get into this new series, you're really limited in what you imagine for yourself. Really limited. Uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like being given a if you're an artist uh, being given a whole studio filled with uh, canvases and paintbrushes and acrylics or oils and welding equipment and and anything to to compose artwork and then just taking out a, a pack of crayons children's you know school crayons and one little sheet of paper and tearing that in half because you didn't want to waste it and drawing on that. <laughs> and, and that's what you're going to come to realize, that the dreams of the human were so limited, so very limited. And I, I understand why the human dreams, uh, but really they're failure dreams. I, they really are. I mean, not that you're dreaming of failure, but you do. But you dream something so human, and then it doesn't work out, and then slowly, over time, you stop dreaming. Slowly, slowly, you, you withhold on the, on the dreams because it's like, oh, that didn't work out. I was such a fool. No, it wasn't that you were a fool. It's actually that you didn't dream beyond the human. You didn't open to the dreams of the I Am. And once you do that, once we walk on beyond the human limitations and dreams, we walk on into the powerless life, all those things are just there, the jobs, the money. The, and you realize with a big laugh, why was I so focused on that when it's just here? It's not magic. I'm going to go into the physics this year, explain why it's not magic. It is just consciousness. That's all. That's all. <laughs> My dear friends, there is this, there is this, all these collisions taking place out there right now, and especially when you get into things like enlightenment, it really actually makes it much more complex. The mind starts working more than ever before, as you have probably discovered, and now you have uh, spirit mind, I'm going to call it, spirit mind operating as well. You used to have just human mind, now you've got spirit mind, which means limited and restricted, uh, a limited and restricted sense of spirituality. And it's actually all a bunch of crap. It really is. It truly is. Uh, because now the mind starts to try to embrace and to own a lot of spiritual concepts. The spiritual concept, heal thyself. Uh, I am in peace, love, and joy. I'm going to om and meditate. That's the biggest bunch of crap. Uh, by the way, in enlightenment, you're not suddenly filled with peace. You're not suddenly mm, oming. That is the biggest delusion uh, there, there can possibly be. I, uh, nah, the, it doesn't happen. Uh, not like that. Uh, matter of fact, the word peace goes out the door in enlightenment. It's not even a word anymore. Uh, it, 
It's not even a, in your vocabulary. The, you know, peace, all, all peace means to a lot of people is give me 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes of just things quieting down for a few moments. That's peace. I just need to back away. I need to get away from myself. That's peace. There's no peace. But suddenly there's a consonance. There's a harmony in things. Suddenly there's not having to figure it all out. Suddenly there's no longer these conflicts going on. Suddenly there's such a grace, a natural grace that takes place, and you just break out laughing. You just crack up laughing because it's uh, yeah, 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 that it just is, and and we'll get there in a moment. But right now we're still back in what a mess, what a mess, what a mess, what a mess. And what do you do? You take a you take a drink. <laughs> what a mess. You have all these uh, conflicting. Desires and truths, what you what you would think uh, truth and beliefs about things, and uh, they're all conflicting. They're all conflicting. It would be like, imagine getting into a car. The car is the symbol of your spiritual journey to your enlightenment, but having no clue of where you're going. You get in. <laughs> like getting <laughs> acting it out, you see, having no idea where you're going. Just you get in that car on the road to enlightenment, and you start going. Well, what do you start realizing first? I don't know where I'm going. But you tell yourself, well, something will happen along the way. Uh, someone will tell me how to get there. Somehow I'm going to get a map. Uh, so I'll know how to get to enlightenment. It's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. Sorry to say. Sorry to say. Then you're driving along on the road to enlightenment, and it's a nice, pleasant day, and you're looking out the window. And say, oh yeah, this is okay, but you're a little tentative. You're like, oh, I, I hope this is okay, but I'll make myself think it's okay. I'll make myself think, oh, what a beautiful sky and the birds. Oh, I just hit a deer. And, and, but I, but, but <laughs> front row laughs. laughs. What a mess! <laughs> what a mess! <laughs> yeah. And then, then, you, then you realize, oh, that car's making a funny noise. I, oh, boy, I, I'm just going to ignore that noise. Have you done that? I'm just going to ignore the noise. I, I hear it, but it, it couldn't be, because this is my car to enlightenment. So I'm going to ignore that, that noise. And you know what happens. Two miles down the road, pssst. Could you do the sound effects for us, Mopo? Pssst. Yeah, yeah. So we have, would you mind giving the microphone, Linda, so we can get the sound effects properly put in here? On the road to enlightenment, you hear that clanking, clanking noise. You ignore it because you're on the road to enlightenment. Everything's going to work out. And all of a sudden, pssst. <laughs> good, good. And the car dies. What do you do? What a mess. Yeah, yeah. There we go again. We probably needed five bottles for today with all these what a mess. Car dies. A lot of things happen. Once again, you get into this uh, dissonance with saying, I'm supposed to be on the road to enlightenment, but my car just died. Maybe Spirit is trying to tell me something. No, maybe you forgot to get the car checked before you went on the journey. Maybe you forgot to check the oil. It was a little low. We're making sure that there was something in the radiator. Spirit's not trying to tell you a damn thing. Spirit is already enlightened, doesn't really care about your journey, you see. <laughs> that, that was funny, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> she gets an Adamas Award just for laughing. Yeah. Please, Linda. We're, yeah, she needs another drink. Yeah. Yes. Where are those Adamas Awards, by the way? Linda? Where is, where is Linda, by the way? An Adamas Award for laughter. I don't have them with me today. You never give them out. You're so stingy. What a I forgot mess. 
Oh. <laughs> the one day, so you get all the money. I have no idea what's in there. Hmm. Ooh, two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> So we're, we're, you're on the journey. So suddenly you have to use the last of your savings to get your enlightenment car repaired, and you start heading back down the road going to you don't know where. Yeah. And you're going down the road to enlightenment, and one day uh, on this long, 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 long journey that lasts many lifetimes, one day you're going as fast as you possibly can. And all you've done is get nowhere faster. <laughs> and the next day, you, your spiritual mind says, Oh, I should slow down and smell the roses like the masters did. You know, they went very slowly on the road to enlightenment and they observed everything and they breathed. And while well, they're on the road to enlightenment, so you go very slow. So you alternate between on this enlightenment journey going very fast and then going very slow. Putting on the gas, putting on the brakes, putting on the gas, putting on the brakes. Do you see the conflict that's going on here? You continue along this journey of enlightenment. Now getting to a level of frustration and angst that simply would have me leave my body. I, I, I just couldn't have handled what you are going through. You're going along now. You've been at this journey for Years driving along. It's the same road. It's the same set of problems. It's the same cheap hotels every night along the journey, and the same people who are trying to rob you blind. But you keep going because you're determined. And you think that's uh, an attribute. You think that's like one of those on the positive side of the list. I'm determined. I, I have strong will. Damn it, I'm going to see my enlightenment through no matter what. I'm never giving up. And when I hear you say that, I think, oh my gosh, I hope, I hope that somebody else comes and helps me because <laughs> this is going to be hard. <laughs> when I hear you say, I'm never giving up, I, this is what I'm going to do. I think to myself, we've got a real problem here, Houston, <laughs> because they're determined to go nowhere. What does an, even an Ascended Master do at that point? You get stubborn. You get brutally, cruelly stubborn on your road to nowhere. But damn it, you're going to do it, because you've made a commitment to yourself. And if you don't do it, you're really going to be embarrassed in front of your friends and family, because everybody knows about your enlight little enlightenment journey, and they all laughed about it. <laughs> and if you come back and say, oh, my car broke down, I went, uh, you know, I went uh, broke along the way, I'm starving, I have nothing, and uh, it's, it's all gone, they're going to laugh at you. So there's this pride of enlightenment. Pride of the spiritual mind that you better damn well fulfill this journey, or you're going to look like a fool. There's also the factor you're going to look like a big fool for yourself, and that's probably right as bad or worse than feeling like a fool in front of others. You are so committed to your journey of enlightenment. Within yourself, it's, it's everything. It's everything. And if this doesn't work out, and if this magic is not real, and you have to go back to that old self. What a mess. What a mess. And the funny thing is, you really can't go back. And the funny thing is, you can't go forward. And the funny thing is, there's nowhere else to go. That's a real mess. What a big mess. Is there any more alcohol left, uh, Susie? Yeah, yeah go, go ahead. What a mess. I hope by now you're starting to understand the conflict, the dissonance in all of this. And I hope you're starting to understand this is a big train wreck on the way to happening. So you're driving along on this road to enlightenment, and it goes on and on and on, and each day is the same as the next, and you keep having hopes of enlightenment. You keep hoping that I'll suddenly enlighten you. You keep hoping, if it's not me, you're going to leave me. You're going to go somewhere else for the enlightenment. You keep hoping that there's something. That's a billion Congress again. <laughs>
<laughs> and you're, you're hoping to distract me by some, uh, something else, but I'm going to keep driving home the point. It's a mess in there. It's a real mess. It's an enlightenment mess. And the good news is, on this road to nowhere, you're exactly where you should be. That's – oh, no, no. And let me rephrase that now for you. I, I said, on this road to nowhere, on the road to enlightenment, with all the conflict and all the dissonance in it, you're absolutely exactly where you should be. Because – because – what? A mess? No! You can have a drink on that. No, actually, it's perfect. It's perfect. And, and all of the things I've set up to now are – we need some more um, beverages out here. Uh, some more lemonade or whatever people are drinking. What? A mess? Not really. It's absolutely perfect. And what I would like to do now, especially since you're a little um, more relaxed than you were an hour ago, I want you to take a moment and remember this whole thing with enlightenment. It didn't start with a thought. It didn't start with suddenly one day you got so tired of your old life that you decided you were going to get enlightened. It didn't start when – even when somebody took you to a class or you read a book. No, my friends, it did not. It started with a deep knowingness, a very profound, deep knowingness. It was not a thought. It was not an action. It was not a journey. It was a knowingness that emanated from very deep within. It's gotten abused. It's gotten distorted. It's gotten very, very deluded along the way. But this knowingness has always been there. You don't know what enlightenment is, and you shouldn't know. For the limited mind has no way of knowing. It will try to pretend. It will try to imagine, even. A very cheap type of imagination is you being rich and famous and sexy and having all sorts of relationships and being a grand guru and a master. That's what the mind does. It's a distraction. It's not real. Who knows what is going to happen? And it doesn't matter, period. It doesn't matter. So I ask you to take a moment and come back to the knowingness. The knowingness that was not a thought. It never was a car. It never was a journey. It never was about trying to be a perfect human. It was never about anything other than coming back to yourself. It wasn't machio. It wasn't phrases and words. It wasn't sitting here in the Chambra audience. <clears throat> and it wasn't efforting. It wasn't about power. It wasn't about even wisdom. It wasn't about getting anything. It was a knowingness, a deep loving knowingness, a knowingness that wasn't an angel or an ascended master coming to you, a knowingness that wasn't given by another, prompted by another, brought into action by another. It came from you. It wasn't your golden angel, your higher self, or any of those other words. It was you. It was all you. Not just the human, not what you call the divine. It was the I am, the true I am, that is present here as the human is. That's right here. So I'd like to do a feeling. I'm not even going to call it a mirab, just a feeling back into that knowingness. <coughs> Get the lights down, please. After all this mess and all this chaos and confusion, after all this uncertainty within yourself, because I've seen and I've heard when you've wondered if this was just a big mistake, you've wondered if your spiritual journey was a delusion. Well, yes, it was. But it started with something so pure, so real, and so deep. Now, we get a little music in the background. 
I'm not asking you to go back and think about this, where this knowing this came from. It doesn't matter. It's without a date. It's without an action. It's without any relationship. You see, part of the problem in the spiritual journey is that the mind still tries to relate everything to everything else. And when we say the word spiritual or enlightenment, it tries to relate to something. It'll grab on to whatever it can in its relational nature. But the knowingness, that deep knowingness that you had, doesn't need to relate to anything. It just knows. It's just there. The mind tries to figure out the road to enlightenment. It's just trying to serve you. It's trying to do for you. But it can't know. The mind will try to relate to something. It'll create a visual of a car going down the highway, breaking down. It'll create the visual of you in your determination and stubbornness for enlightenment. But the reality is there's no car. The reality is there's no place to go. Nothing that has to be done. Certainly nothing that has to be fixed. Absolutely. It's one of the tricks or the delusions of enlightenment. Something has to be fixed before enlightenment can occur. But it doesn't. Nothing needs to be fixed. Whatsoever. Not one thing needs fixing. Not a single thing. I don't care if you're an alcoholic, if you're an idiot, it doesn't need to be fixed. Some of you related to that, didn't you? <laughs> Nothing needs to be fixed. So I ask you to take a deep breath and stay in your body this time. Come back to that knowingness. You created it, not some grand golden angel, not some higher self. That was you. The knowingness, the I am. Following this knowingness came thoughts, and dreams, and imaginations about awakening and enlightenment. Following this knowingness came a change in energy dynamics in your life, in relationships, in the way you interact with yourself and others. But none of those even are very important. None of them. They are not the thing that brings enlightenment. It was a simple knowingness. So simple, there is no definition. So simple that the mind cannot relate anything to it. So simple that you cannot recreate it. You cannot recreate it. Because it's still there, my friends. It never left. That knowingness, the I am, that was never extinguished. In front of that flame of knowingness, you put a lot of other things. Grand, interesting experience into your own awakening. But that flame was always there. I know at times you've tried to recreate it. Where is that feeling? It's still there. It actually is what's really guiding you. Sometimes when you wonder why certain things happen in your life, why certain events, situations happen, because that knowingness is still there. In spite of your stubbornness and your determination, it, it knows the truth. It knows it is the way. 
It knows that it's the awakening. It's the only thing, only thing, my friends, that will remain true and real. When I say that I cringe when I hear Shambra saying, I'm going to keep going no matter what, I truly wish they would just stop. Get rid of that car. Get rid of their journey. Get rid of all the macchio, and the macchio is the gas for the journey. Never fill that tank again. Get rid of the whole thing. Just come back to the knowingness. Nothing else matters. Nothing else is important. Nothing else is going to bring the awareness of the enlightenment. Nothing. The knowingness, so subtle, can't even be defined. The mind has no concept. The mind has no way to relate to it. Take a deep breath and let yourself fall right into your own knowingness. Be in that beautiful embrace of the knowingness. The knowingness was never a directive. It wasn't a directive that said, You have to awaken now. It had nothing to do with destiny or timing. You got a glimpse of it. A glimpse of it. Just a taste of it. When you let down your guard, when you surrender to the I am, to yourself for a moment, that glimpse of it created a lot of mind thought, a lot of macchio, a lot of determination. I, I love you, Shambra, for your determination. But determined to what? Come now and let all that battling, determination, will, drive, push, force, power, let it all down. And amazing, you'll be okay. Actually, better than ever before. You can stop trying so hard. You can stop being afraid. It's all right there in you, not me, in you. Knowingness, the I am. Knowingness, it's time to come home. Time to come home to the I am, to the awareness. Time to integrate. Just time to come home. Isn't it funny? That you had the knowingness that it was time to come home to the I am, but you got in a car and went off on a long journey. No home was right there, absolutely right there. I guess that's why I say it was just, just perfect in a way, exactly where you should be. Had to go through all the trials and tribulations before you just wore yourself out and said, Ah, oh, here I am. So you stopped the searching. There should be a law against spiritual searching, and there should be a law against laws, so. Oh, it's spiritual searching. It's, uh, it's an industry, you know. It's a distraction. I guess it's an experience. It's frustrating because it's all right if you're doing the spiritual 
searching and you're aware that you're just searching for the sake of searching. This gets a little sad when you're doing the searching and you think it's real. When you think it's actually going to get you somewhere. Now home. Home is calling you. Home's within. No place to go. No words to hide behind. Nothing to do. Nothing to fix. Just coming back home. Without buts. Without the buts. But what am I going to do when I walk out the door? Not a damn thing. Go about gossiping if you want, drinking, carousing, searching, thinking, battling. When you walk out that door today, you're going to do it at least aware that you're doing it. At least aware that you don't need to do it. At least aware that. It was that knowingness that called you. It's still calling. It's still there. And there's not a damn thing you need to do. Nothing. Take a good deep breath. Try to stay in your body. <laughs> Let go of some of that tension. Oh my, the tension about awakening and enlightenment, the stress. That'd be a good song, the stress of enlightenment. If I'd have told you, if Tobias had told you 12 years ago, you don't need to do anything. You've still gone out searching, you've still gone broke, had health issues, and all the rest of the stuff. I guess you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. Right now. Home is calling all the time. A deep breath. So, my dear friends, oh, you can bring down the music a little bit. We'll just stay in this nice, quiet lighting for a moment. Remember, it's, it's your knowingness. Ever get in trouble while you're out there doing your everyday human things? Just remember a couple things from today. I'm amazed that you got through it. That was a big mess, a big, big dissonance. And, and you kept on trying to fix the dissonance. That's the interesting thing. And that caused more dissonance. You kept on trying to fix things that could not be fixed ever. But, but it made you feel good, like at least you were fixing something, working on something. And the more you tried to fix, the more broken it got. That's it. It was just about remembering. Home is calling. Always is. It's all. It's all you need to do. I'm going to do a couple here. What's the last thing a person does before realization of their enlightenment? Yes, Vince. Uh, why did I wait so long? Yeah, but that's a thought. But what's the last thing you do? Um, you just give it all up. Good. Good. That's the answer to, to my question. That's what I would have answered. You stop trying. Last thing somebody does now. Maybe some of you thought there's some great big mystical thing you do. Yeah, you stop trying. You just let it go. I, I call it allowing. Stop trying. Stop efforting. Stop pushing. Stop trying to figure it out. It's going to happen. So why screw with it? Why interfere with it? It's going to happen. All of you should be breathing a sigh of relief right now. Oh, God. No, truly. It's, you look, if you do a, a study of the, the uh, Ascended Masters, 
and you look at the, kind of their path. There's a lot of common things that they did. They all studied a lot. They all disciplined a lot. They all uh, agonized a lot. It felt really bad for all, guilty, guilty, guilty. That's kind of a weird part of the process. Just oh, I did all this bad stuff. Please, please forgive me. Uh, <laughs> well, but then they stop trying. They give up. And I bring this back a little bit to the story of Yeshua and you coming here to plant that seed of divinity. Then you studying, sequestering yourself in these sacred uh, um, organizations, and then getting sick and tired of it and just walking away, disillusioned. It's almost like that now. You're almost sick and tired of your own path, of, of what you've been doing, of your spirituality. Oh, even the word doesn't even sound so good anymore. It's like, oh, oh. Spirituality is just another excuse for not being human in life, in yourself. So you get sick of it, and, and suddenly, whether it's done consciously or unconsciously, you just stop trying. I'm so tired of that. That didn't get me anywhere. All these years, you know, whether it was Crimson Circle or any other group, all these years, look at me. I'm a mess. I'm worn out. I'm, I'm broke. I have nothing. People don't like me. I, I smell bad. <laughs> and I give up. I give up. I'm just going to fade into life. That's actually really good when you get to that point. First of all, you're not going to fade into life. You're not just going to go back to being uh, common at all. But what's good about that is you've finally given up. You finally stop trying to be spiritual, stop trying for ascension. The Enlightenment is here. I asked you before, why did you wait, assuming you could have just done it a couple of lifetimes ago or earlier in this lifetime? It's already here. All the preparations been done. All the processing's been done. All the prep. Uh, all the getting yourself ready. It's here. So stop trying. But in that question, in that answer to the question, when you say stop trying, that would indicate then if you stop trying that it's going to be here because it already could have been. And that brings it back to my first question: What are you waiting for? Don't think about it, though, because you'll drive yourself crazy thinking about it. You'll start going through all these mental gyrations. You're not going to be able to figure it out. But you can let yourself feel it and realize it and get that, aha. Uh -huh. It's not a bad reason. No, it's not, not a negative reason or anything. It's a very deep reason. It's a very pure, real reason. When you hear yourself chatter, 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 Put it away, because the answer is just a few simple words. You realize it, and when you do, you realize that you're ready. And that's going to be scary. You realize that it's time for some responsibility, if you want to call it that. It's not really responsibility so much as it is, it's just time. And when you get that very simple, profound, pure answer to your, within yourself, why have you waited? What are you waiting for? You know then you're ready. Then you have to answer that one more question from yourself. Are you ready right now? I can already tell you the answer. Once you realize why you've waited, once you get that, you can't wait anymore. You can't delay it anymore. Let's take a deep breath with that. Oh, I love you guys. I love that we don't have to be all holy and sacred here. I love that you let yourself feel some of the deepest, deepest feelings. Mm. Two hours. <laughs> so let's turn down the lights a little bit and in just a moment bring up some sweet music. But before we do, I just want to once again Thank you. Acknowledge each and every one of you. Acknowledge you for who you are, not what you're doing together as a group, what you're doing as yourself. 
I know it's difficult, and I know how many times you could try to turn and run the other way. It doesn't work, but how many times you could try to bury your head in the sand. It doesn't work so well either. How many times you could have just gone into total macchio. But here you are. Here you are. I, I do want you to carefully, carefully feel into this question on why you could have been embodied a couple of lifetimes ago, or even this lifetime. Why did you wait? There is a beautiful gift in that. Don't think about it. Just feel it. Feel into it. It will provide you with the answer you've been looking for for a long time. But right now, let's switch gears into the Mirab. My second question, what's the last thing a human does before the realization of their enlightenment? It's kind of a little bit of a play on words, because I said, what's the last thing a human does? Like there's something that has to be done, but not really. What's to stop trying? Stop trying. Now that may seem a little counterintuitive, like, oh no, but don't I need to be doing something? No. Don't I need to be studying Adamas? No. Don't I need to be doing 15 minutes of deep breathing daily? No. Not really. Don't I need to really just absolutely watch my diet? No. Don't I need to think spiritual thoughts? No. Well, then what the hell am I supposed to do? Nothing. Nothing. Do whatever you want. Go well, for a bike ride. You know, you might want to do some of the things around the house that you haven't been doing. Change the light bulb that's been burned out for six months now. I know this is, makes you feel like you're just so human, but you know, you might want to do that. Fix that broken handle on the door. You know, I know it's not real spiritual, but. Since you don't have anything else to do, you might as well do that. Do anything you want. Because this is the time right now, kind of a real time of evolution, transformation, whatever you want to call it, where you're being asked to just stop all that human stuff. Because there's something compelling goes beyond the human stuff. Something so compelling that it goes far, far beyond what the human can try to manage, what the human thinks it has to manage. Compelling meaning so passionate, so real. So loving and so large. Let's not call it the soul. We're going to start moving beyond that word. It's all just you. It's not in a far off, distant place. It doesn't have little fairy feather wings. It's just you. This something that's so compelling. It's just so compelling, so passionate. It just has to be. It can't not be. And this is your realization, your enlightenment. What's going to happen? 
when a master gets to this point, the last thing they do is stop trying because they realize it was all ludicrous. It was all just the workings of a limited mind or personality. And they surrender to themselves, to the I am. They stop spewing macchio to themselves and to others. They stop wondering when and where and how. They stop trying to make enlightenment human. It's not the human that's responsible for this anyway. As long as the human thinks that it's the one doing it, the rest of the I am just sits back and patiently waits. When the human stops, stops trying, stops efforting, stop structuring, then the compelling enlightenment it comes. Well, the real way of saying that then, because of the compelling nature, the natural nature of enlightenment, you realize it's always been there. I don't mean this as a game. It's not a play on words. When you just take a deep breath and stop trying, stop making enlightenment into a wrestling match, you feel that compelling, very compelling nature of your own realization, and then it happens. I like the word compelling. It means it has such a f dynamic to it, such a passion to it. It's not an if or maybe or when or why, it's compelling, passionate. so compelling that you can't go wrong. It, it can't go wrong. Take this moment just to stop trying, just even in the brief couple of minutes here, to stop trying. Stop trying to figure it out. Let this moment feel compelling nature of your enlightenment, passionate, present, this enlightenment doesn't compromise, it's not going to compromise or negotiate with the human, not at all, no need to. It doesn't play the games of power or the games of the mind. so compelling that it knows what's going to happen. Take a deep breath with that. I know you, the human, you're tired, often confused, wondering what next. Take a deep breath. This enlightenment 
it, it's beyond you. I mean, beyond your limitations. This realization, nothing that has to be structured or planned. Just needs to be received. Very compelling meaning. It already knows that it's realized. It already knows that. It's fulfilled. It's not a goal. It's not a goal for the I am. So compelling that it's already there. It just wants to share that with the human. Already realized, fulfilled. Compelling meaning. It's already happened. Just wants to share that with you. But you gotta stop trying. You gotta stop thinking that you're gonna make it happen. That you have to make it happen. This isn't a maze. This isn't some huge puzzle that you're being asked to figure out. That would be cruel. But just that. It's time to stop trying, please. Now, when that sounds so simple, the human thinks that I have to be doing something. Okay, change that light bulb, fix the broken handle, sweep your garage, go for a walk, buy a dog. Love a dog. It doesn't really matter. But just stop trying to be enlightened. The human is never going to figure it out. It's not your responsibility anyway. Just for you to receive it. This thing of enlightenment is so compelling. It's already here. I had so much passion to it, so much expression to it that it's already here. Therefore, you cannot take any wrong turns. You cannot do it wrong. You can avoid it. Wait like you've been doing for a couple lifetimes. But the compelling nature of the I am, 
makes it so it's already here. Be a couple months before we're back together again like this in our shout. I'll miss it. I'll, I'll be talking in other groups, but I'll miss it. I'm going to leave you with a big one between now and then. What are you waiting for? Don't give yourself the macchio answers that many of you gave today. That's window dressing. That's kind of covering it up. When the answer comes, it will come very simply, very clearly. What are you waiting for? And when it comes, then you'll really be ready. In the meantime, my dear friends, I'll be traveling the world with Calder and Linda, going to places <coughs> far and beyond, not just on this planet, but in all the realms. And in my absence from the physical realm with you, please know that, indeed, we are together every step of the way. And in so, all is well in all of creation. Thank you for your indulgence. Thank you. If you want to summarize the, the year, and, and really into the next three years in total, look at it from the perspective of two things that are happening on this planet. Two of the most important elements on this planet, maybe in the whole cosmos, and those elements are power and freedom. We've talked about it before, but now when you see something happen in the news, take a look at it from what's happening to power, what's happening to freedom in your own life. Uh, uh, and I've talked to key hawkers about this recently, releasing power in your life. Oh, it's confusing and scary. Well, how can you release power? And the interesting thing is you can't release just a little bit and hold on to a little bit. You release it all together, the need for power. Power is an illusion. It really doesn't exist anywhere other than in a belief system. Power is about the accumulation the getting of energy, the fear that there might not be enough energy for you. The biggest number one human need is not food or water or uh, money or sex. It's for energy. Energy. It then manifests in these other forms, but that is the number one human need, is getting energy. People do it through power. They think they have to force it, struggle, steal it, manipulate it, accumulate it, or anything else. Imagine going without power. It seems frightening because you live in a world that's filled with power. It's filled with people who play with power, who have used power on you, mental power, financial power, physical power on you. You say, how can I go without power? I won't have any defenses against this crazy, sometimes insane world. The fact is, without power, they're not going to see you. They play power, and that's all they see is power. When you release the power game in your own life, you become invisible to them. In other words, they go to somebody else to steal, to do all their power things with. You are then free. You don't have to play the game. They're not going to be coming after you. This year is about power and freedom in your own life and in the world. It's going to be about you giving yourself that freedom that's inherent within you, but you have a lot of overlays, a lot of issues, a lot of everything else that you've taken that very freedom away. Freedom sounds wonderful, but it's a tremendous responsibility. It sounds, oh, I'm going to be free, but free of, free of what? Well, you know, most of the time you think free of paying bills, free of having a boss, free of uh, governments. But the real freedom is within, free of your past, free of your beliefs. Beliefs are kind of like power. They're an illusion. They're made up. Uh, not that they're bad. They're, they're a fun tool to play with, but at a certain point they get old. That's freedom from beliefs, freedom from limitations. And again, while that sounds wonderful, it is a tremendous responsibility. 
Many people who are given the choice of freedom will find a lot of excuses not to accept it, not to take it. Those to me are the issues for 2014. There's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot going on in the world. Come back, though, to the underlying fundamental reasons for it. It's power and freedom. This year we're also going to discover something that Tobias talked about many years ago, but actually never has really been experienced deeply that there is no power. There is no power and no need for it. This world and much of the other worlds operates on the belief of power. People seek it. People try to acquire it. People try to steal it from others. Power is also – yeah, no power. Are powerless. It's just there's no need for power. But you look at your news. Watch other people. It is power games going on. Power is also a part of this whole energy dilemma that not only this world but other parts of this universe are facing right now because of the belief in power. Power would make one feel strong and worthy and they would feel like they had an identity. They had a purpose. So they would try to acquire power. Best way to do that is from somebody else, leading somebody else to believe that they're better than you. That's psychic power. Literally taking energy from them, getting down to the, the level of stealing things from them. Most people derive power through sex, through sex. They, 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 they think that it's pl pleasurable, but it's really a power game, really. That's why, that's why the whole experience with sex for most humans is not what it could be. That's why there's an incredible industry right now based on pills for making men uh, with an erection that lasts four months or whatever that happens to be. <laughs> four days, I don't know. I, I don't have that problem. I'm not in physical body. Uh, the humans and, and other beings, uh, not just humans, uh, there's a lot of aliens as well, that are in a constant uh, power game, stealing it from others. You see it on Earth all the time, all the time. Politicians and business people and military. Every time you see a military flare up, it's just somebody that needs a little power. Uh, that's very true. So there's this whole power game going on everywhere. The fact is, you don't need any. The fact is, actually, you really don't need any energy to exist. You're going to exist without energy. But the fact is that energy is there to serve you in great quantities. And power is a distortion or manipulation of energy. We're going to learn how to go powerless, how to uh, how to literally not power your, into yourself, which so many of you are still doing, and not using power or getting into power with other people. Yes, it is a part of the sexual energy school, an extension of that. So this year, no power and no need for it. No need for it. Could you imagine having no need for any kind of power, financial power, financial power, not having a need for it? or of uh, financial lack, uh, of health power, of you know, biological power, of any kind of power over other people. So many of you in, in, in past experiences, past lives, got into playing with psychic energies with others, witches and uh, all the rest of that. Uh, you learned how to use your energies, your talents, your psychic abilities with others. And you're still a lot of you are still suffering for it. Because when you lay a spell on somebody, it's really laying it on you. That's the problem with witchcraft. That's why I'm not a big fan of it. Because it's all you're doing is laying it on you as well. You got into this whole power thing. Initially to protect yourself or defend your families or whatever. 
But you got into it, and it's a cycle that's hard to break out of. Power cycle is very hard to break out of. But you're going to discover how to do it easily. <laughs> Overload the circuits. Dear Shambra, this is why you're here. You chose to be here in this lifetime as embodied consciousness. Embodied consciousness, that's it. Embodied awareness after many, 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 many lifetimes of being in the mind, many lifetimes of being in power. You chose to be here as embodied consciousness. You don't need power anymore. It'll be all around you. You'll feel it at times, and a part of you will still try at times to be in power once again, but you don't need it ever again. You'll find that there's something far grander than the mind or intelligence. It's called knowingness. It's always been there, but it's been covered up. This is where we're going. The mind will still function. The mind will still work up to a point, but we're going into knowingness. It's far more efficient and far more joyful than the mind. That's where we're going, my dear friends. Have you noticed in the past few weeks uh, the interesting effects? You'll be talking to somebody. You'll be in, a, I would say, the older energy, having a discussion or an argument, and in the past few weeks you just forget everything. You're just standing there. Your mind totally gives out. You forget your name. You forget why you're talking to them, and suddenly nothing matters. Having one of those moments, absolutely. That is. Well, I have to test this out. Mm. That is. Oh, that's that stuff that Calder drinks. You'd expect more and more of that. There's nothing wrong. It's absolutely appropriate because we're going beyond the mind. We're going into knowingness. That's so clear and so fun. You'll. You'll look back on the mental days as being belabored, as being tedious, as being slow, and this whole game of intelligence, trying to know everything, to learn – you're done learning the facts and figures of life, because first of all, you can never learn everything, and secondly, you'll find where we're going, they don't apply. Logic does not work. Now, because you know about logic and how to use logic, you'll still be able to apply it to a degree, to the, the proper degree, in working with others. But there's going to be no more of these head games. You know how some of you get into negotiations with others. You think that you have to do some sort of manipulation or working the program. Those days are done. Done. It's all mental, and you're just putting mental against mental. You don't have to negotiate anymore. All you have to do is take a deep breath and be in the knowingness that it's already worked out. No matter what the other person or peoples do in a negotiation – you're negotiating for a home or a car or a job or anything like that – you thought, I have to be clever here because they're going to be coming at me from their secret angle and I have to come at them. Let those days go. It's mental, and it involves power. You are a being of consciousness. When working with others, you're going to find a very interesting dynamic. If you maintain the I Am presence, and that dynamic is you sit down at the table, so to speak, and negotiation is already done. It's already over. You've already gotten what you came there to get, and don't be afraid of getting it, because you're never going to ask for too much, and you're never going to ask for it at the expense of another. You'll find them literally and somewhat metaphorically coming to the table and being there in service to you, as long as you're not playing that game of power and mind. Once again, you're going to remark to yourself, you're going to ask yourself, why did you ever make it so difficult, so challenging, such a battle? There are no battles at all anymore for any of you. No battles 
anymore. It's a cricket that's visiting us in his head. I'll squash it right now. <laughs> so it's just a cricket, I'm sure. No more, ba no more battles anymore. Not even my battles with mobile phones. Isn't that a relief? Yes, no problem. No more battles, no more of that struggling like you've had in the past. So let's take a deep breath with that, beyond power and beyond the mind. The two biggest things that were holding you back, and that really, truly holding the planet back right now, no need for it. Living a powerless life is an amazing – there goes that word again – is a beautiful gift to yourself. You don't need it. There is no power in consciousness, not whatsoever. The only thing in consciousness is the awareness, I exist. There is no power in energy at all. Energy is just something that's here to serve you. It's compressed consciousness. It's yours. It's there to create whatever realities you're choosing to create. The hardest part is going to be you're still in this realm. It'd be different if you were off in your own sovereign domain somewhere, but then if you were, you'd be dead. <laughs> so you're going to be – one of the challenges, you're going to see power and mind all around you, and you'll even remember when you used it. It's not good, like it's going to vanish or evaporate. It's simply not going to be a factor anymore. You're going to see power particularly in this year, in the world around you, and pl people playing those games. But the best way to handle power is to have none. Because those who work with power and work with the mind seek others who work with power and work with the mind. They won't see you unless you're there of your choosing, of your desire for your creations, and then they are there to serve you. It's a tall order, it's something many of you are still not totally comfortable with yet, but you will be going forward. Let's take a deep breath with that. Hmm. Next, I promised we we're going to talk about two trends. These are world trends, and we're going to go through them very, very quickly. The first you know about, and it's not from Tobias, it's from me. One of the biggest trends in the world right now is power. Everybody's into power, whether they realize it or not. Accumulation of power it can be done through money, politics, government, uh, sex, um, industry, commerce, religion. It's all about power. There is a massive drive on this planet for power. Not only that, but the desire for power on this planet is actually causing uh, beings from other realms, uh, not little men in spaceships, but other beings to take a particular interest in this planet because there is this obsession with power going on. You see it everywhere, but it's more than ever. It's showing up. Read between the lines uh, or listen between the lines in the news about the events. Stop for a moment and say, well, how, does this, how is this about power? You're going to realize that almost everything that is occurring out there is about the game of power. I think you, you have a popular TV show series called Game of Thrones, kind of the same thing, but game of power. It's, it's the shifting and moving of power. Power is an illusion. There is no power in the, the clear realms. There's no need for power. I'm not talking about energy power, the thing that, you know, gasoline to put in your car to make it go. That's fuel. I'm talking about psychological power, mental power, and it's going to continue to grow and grow and grow. Humans are addicted to power more than anything else. It's actually almost impossible – I'd say it is impossible – to get addicted to a physical substance, alcohol tobacco, drugs. Physically impossible to get addicted. Uh, there are those who will argue with me about that, but you can get addicted to power 
uh, in a variety of different and sometimes insidious, insidious ways, you can get addicted to power and then use that addiction in things like drugs and alcohol, or use drugs or alcohol to try to kill that pain of power. Oddly enough, it's pleasurable and it's painful. But you're going to see it more and more and more in, in this planet. Please realize for yourself, as you go forward, that there's no need for power. There's not. There are those who I, I, I've talked to in our nightly sessions, and they will argue, they will compromise, they will say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll reduce my power need, uh, but I still have to have some as a protection against other humans because they're playing power, therefore I need some. No. It's either all or nothing, kind of. All or nothing. Power is an illusion. Power is making a statement that you believe there are things that you need to get from outside of yourself, and you don't. Not one single thing. All the energy or the, the attractant for energy is already there, particularly once you start using it. Keper, your creative, your spirit, already there. But if you're still addicted to power, and that's going to be the focus of my portion of the talk in August, if you're still addicted to power, you will still try to be gaining more power and securing that power. In other words, you've got to you got to bring some power in and hold it in your power uh, bank. Once you realize that power is an illusion, you don't need it in your life. You become invisible to those who play with power. They are not interested in you whatsoever. They are not going to try to come in and take anything from you because there's no food in the pantry. There's nothing there. They're not interested. You're not a player. They're going to ask you to get away from the table because you're not a player. You don't have anything in your pockets. That's when you're free, truly free. Power is the greatest and perhaps, you could say, oh, the only true addictive force on this planet. It's an illusion. Once you go beyond the need for power in your personality, in your life, You'll be free. You realize you don't need any power. Energy is always going to be there. It's a natural thing. When you're in consciousness, there's energy. When you're passionate, there's energy. You don't need power. It's it's very very false. <laughs> My point is that the human self cannot possibly know what to do or even imagine what is coming next. And this I am -er is coming next. I mean, it's in the mail. It's coming your way. It's not even a gift from me. It's you to yourself. And when you get it, get the hell out of the way, your human self out of the way. You just saw what happens in a very, very uh, <laughs> Couldn't have scripted it better. When the human stops and thinks it's limited, and we're going where there are no limitations. I don't need the human to go, but I need the I am to go. When you get this gift of the I am, and, I, and I'm very serious, that it neutralizes emotions, it attracts energies, it allows you to be wherever you choose to be without thinking about it, without trying to conjure it or imagine it, because you can't. The human can't. So let your I Am, let the real, the real you come forth. It knows what to do. It knows exactly what it's like to automatically attract energy. Without holding back, without going into power, without having lame, limited human desires uh, for what it can do. It knows what to do with all that energy. It, you, the, the, the part that's more than just human, can be anywhere, anytime. It is so easy. You don't have to go to mystery school to know how to do it. Putting the consciousness anywhere, but if it is the human efforting 
empowering to do it, you will get nowhere other than to frustration. Because the human, as you saw in this example, doesn't really understand, doesn't know, doesn't – can't break the imagination. And what it desires is so very human. And I'm not knocking the human. I am one at this same moment. I am an Ascended Master. It's the most glorious experience. But it can also hold you back if that's all you're allowing yourself to be. You saw in this beautiful – I couldn't have done it better myself – example of limitation, of fear, of macchio, of no inspiration. So please, human, when this comes to you, the I am -er, get out of the way so that all of you can go to this next level. There's no power in here. This, this will disintegrate when used for power. So please, get out of your way. Good. Let's take a good deep breath for that. Oh. Ah, 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 ah. I want to do two things right now. We don't have a lot of time, but we have all the time in the world. It's both. It's and. See, it's never one – never, ever, ever again should it be one or the other. It's always and. And that's what's going to differentiate you from other people. Uh, and it's going to – what I say, in about six months from now you're going to get mad and say, how come you didn't tell us this sooner? So right now I'd like the lights down. We're going to do two experiences. The first one I'd like to do with you – trying to decide which to do first. So we're a very short one here, but because we don't need a lot of time for it. We're going to walk on beyond power, beyond power. So uh, John will want the alternative track, not the, uh, not the first one that was composed just for today. But I want to do a brief experience. It's kind of like a dream walk, but it's you walking with yourself. So take a good deep breath here and remember the I am -er. It allows you to be anywhere you choose to be. Maybe not with your physical body, maybe not with your brain, but the I am -er lets you be wherever you want. There's no will. There's no force. We're moving now into a whole new era called Without Power. And as I said earlier, it's not – you don't try to keep one foot in power and one out. You simply go beyond. Power is an illusion from those who don't understand that they, their consciousness, creates all the energy that's ever needed for everything. Nothing needs to be gotten outside. Nothing needs to be taken from others. All energy is already within. As we go beyond power, you're entering into a whole different world, a very different world. It's a very liberating and freeing world. And you realize that you naturally attract energy. You realize that you always have been. But maybe not the kind that you were consciously choosing. You realize that never again do you need to look to anyone else for energy. That you naturally attract from your field, from the universal field, from wherever, it doesn't matter, but you naturally attract it. It comes to you. To use a bit of an analogy, kind of a cliché, but it's a difference between getting up in the morning, feeling hungry, having to go outside and hunt an animal, 
for your food, and then skin it, and cook it, and then finally eat it. That's kind of what it's been like, and it's what it's like for most people, having to chase after everything. The difference here is in the powerless life, you get up in the morning and you feel that really wonderful sense of being a little hungry. You know, it's very sensual. Oh, feed the body. It feels so good. You go and open the front door, and the meal is already there, sitting there, cooked, ready to go. Whatever it is you want. And the human mind is going to try to jump right away and say, well, how did this get here? And is there anything suspicious about it? Is this some sort of trick? And you're going to say, human, shut up. Eat. You've attracted this. It's come to you. That's the powerless life. Years and years ago, I think it was Adamus or Tobias. I'm Adamus. <laughs> Tobias, that said, "It comes to you. It comes to you, and it does." Going beyond power, it just comes to you. It's a very, very different reality, and and you can't try to control it or manage it. The powerless life means the realization that everything is there and going to be there. You're going to have a part of your humanness that is screaming out, saying, but you don't understand. What if? I've tried this before and it didn't work. My friends, it's kind of a now or never. It's kind of trust or go back. So we enter this era, this dimension, this consciousness of the powerless life. Don't do anything right now, please. If you're wondering, well, what do I have to do? How hard do I have to work at this? Don't. You're already there. Do you understand that? You're already there. This isn't magic. This is just consciousness. There's no effort in it. There's no trying to figure it out. There's no analysis. There's no there's not even focusing. You're already there. And that's the amazing thing. It was done without power. Now, the only thing the human needs to do is allow it. That's it. So take a deep breath. You are now in the powerless life. When you find yourself, your human self, saying, Yeah, but what if? Just shh. You're in the powerless life. You don't need to work at it. You're just there. Now watch how things change, how they're different. This is not hard work. There's no effort. You're just there. Now let yourself experience it. I know, I know you have flying through your head right now, but what if and what if, how should I do it? What? Shh. That's just that human voice. But remember, 
It's the and. A life where consciousness, the I am, attracts everything that's needed. It attracts it. Let's take a deep breath. As we segue into the next part of what I wanted to do with you today, let's take a deep breath. <sighs> 